Hi, hi everyone. Welcome, welcome to Lazy Real Talk. Uh, can you guys see me and hear me? All right? Yes, because I see this internet signal is not very strong. Can you guys hear me? See me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Quantum Kamada. Thank you. You can you can now. Okay. Excellent. All right. Okay. Let's talk about CCP and money. Without money, the Chinese Communist Party won't be able to achieve its goals. But China's economy isn't doing too well. I shouldn't say too well. Isn't doing well. We've seen how difficult it has been for people to find a job, and how many people are forced to take pay cuts. Right, and this includes government employees. Uh, can people can you are coming in loud and clear? We are live. Oh, thank you, thank you, excellent. So, but the Chinese uh, government seems, you know, seems to have still have a lot of money to spend. Um, it's still spending money lavishly. So, for example, the Chinese companies are. Um, like the EV companies, not just EV companies, Chinese companies, are able to wage price wars in the international markets, um, and without government subsidies, they're not able to do that. And recently, the twenty billion dollar secret aid to Russia via crypto transfer uh, makes Beijing look very suspicious. So where? So today, let's. Let's answer a good question. Where does Beijing's bottomless money come from? In 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 the uh, current economic um, distress, right? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward. The answer is it 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 comes from its people and businesses through taxation or high ta taxation. So let's delve into the details of how the CCP collects taxes. To understand its funding, so we'll compare Chinese people's tax burden ratio to that of the United States and Europe.、Um, the tax burden ratio is an economic measure or term. It's the ratio of total government revenues、uh, divided by national GDP. So, from 2006, the tax burden ratio in the U.S. has consistently fluctuated between 26 percent to 30 percent, with the midpoint being at 28 percent. It means that the American government collects 28 percent of the U.S. GDP through various forms of taxes and government fees, and this is the money the U.S. government controls and spends. The same ratio in Europe is about forty percent,、uh, fluctuating, fluctuating up and down by about four percent. Compared to the U.S., European countries are generally、um, high welfare states, so therefore it's understandable that their government, their governments, collect more taxes.、Um, <clears throat> when compared to the U.S., so today let's look at how much money does the Chinese government collect、uh, from its people and businesses, and how it has been collecting taxes to cover for the uh, uh, the, the tax revenue downfall. I mean the the decline the the、uh, the downward trend you know in this downward downward economic trend. So CCP collects taxes from people and businesses in several buckets or in several categories, and and tax the first one and the most important one is tax and non-tax revenue, but that's only one of them. The other three buckets are government fund revenue. You could also say government fund or public fund proceeds,、um, and then the next bucket is social security taxes. They call they call it social security insurance,、uh, but it's it's essentially social security tax taxes. It's like it's a combination of FICA, yeah, combination of FICA and four hundred one k, 
it's kind of a hybrid of both. Um, 401k here in this country is not mandatory, but in China it's mandatory and it's not 401k. It's just some kind of money the government forces you and your employer to pay and then you sub and then you get kind of a, a monthly stipend from the government when you retire. Anyways, and, and then the last bucket is the profits made by state-owned enterprises, the SOEs. So those are the four buckets. So let's take a look at, I have slides, numbers prepared for you. So for those of you who love numbers, <laughs> here are some numbers for you. Um, so let's look at the buck, the, the, the public bu the public budget revenue or tax or non-tax rev, rev, I mean, tax and non-tax revenues from 2010 to 2023. Um, well, the bulk is tax revenue. Non-tax revenue includes government fees and fines, and it's small, relatively small. Um, it grew from 8.31 trillion in 2020. 10 to 21.7 trillion by 2023, a 2.6 fold increase over 13 years. Um, the next bucket is government fund proceeds. And this, this bucket is uh, mostly the land concession revenue collected by local governments. Um, we know that 70% of real estate prices that the Chinese pay are money paid or were money paid to the local government or paid to local and central government, right, through various taxes and, and um, uh, land concession fees that, that the local government charged the developers who have, who have built the, the money into the price of the real estate. So some people say the high land, the high land concession fee is like a one-time real estate tax that Chinese homeowners pay to the government um, for the next 70 years because they buy the property for, for the 70 year use. Uh, because China really doesn't have a real estate tax yet. Um, so that's what this bucket, the second bucket is. Now revenues from lottery sales are also in this category. Lotteries are essentially a tax on the poor people, those who dream of becoming super rich overnight by lottery tickets and make a contribution to their government. Now, Chinese lottery is also riddled with scandals. Uh, we've seen cases in which the winning numbers are predetermined. Certain individuals win the lottery and <laughs> more than likely return the bulk of the money back to the government. Anyways, um, so... If you look at that bucket, in 2010, the government fund revenue was 3.68 trillion. It reached its peak of almost 10 trillion in 2021. Then it began to decline sharply and was only 7 trillion um, last year in 2023. And even this number, I think, is overstated. Um, now, with further collapse in the real estate market, government fund revenue will inevitably continue to shrink in 2024 and beyond. The third item is social security taxes um, that the Chinese government collects from individuals and their employers. And it's called five, it's called, the name is Wuxian Yijing. Uh, it's called five insurances and one provident fund. <laughs> it's almost like, the, uh, like I said, the a hybrid of FICA tax in the U.S., but it's, it, it's broader. It covers insurance for like disability, maternity leave, unemployment, unemployment, um, like five different insurances. And also uh, the Provident Fund is uh, money that you, that if it, it asks you to put aside for future housing um, purchases or rentals. Uh, so it, and, and the, the way it's calculated, it's calculated based on the person's salary. So the person, the individual contributes 8% to this SSI, whatever retirement account. And his employer contributes 20% of his salary. But of the 20% that the employer 
contributes. Three percent, only three percent, goes to the, indiv the his individual account or her individual account, and seventeen percent goes to the government's social security pool that the government controls and allocates. And and in in past year, we've seen retirees protesting. Um, because the government is now moving some of the individual money, the money that sits in the individual account, to the government pool, and uh, retirees have have protested. So, um, so in theory, the individual gets eleven percent, like annually, right? Eleven percent of their of their salary annually, under his name, and the government gets seventeen percent from the employer. I mean, technically, it's a lot of money put away. Um, but that's not the reality. I'll explain that later. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm I'm saying that people are not getting their fair share. So, um, by um, I'll, I'll explain that later. So, okay. So, if you look at this category, the total payment of Social Security. Uh, was only two point, a little over two trillion yuan in 2010. Now it's almost 12 trillion. It, it, it's an increase of 5.2 times. Um, and in absolute value, if you look at the numbers carefully, the 11 trillion yuan social security taxes has significantly exceeded the government's land sales revenue. Uh, or the second bucket, the government fund revenue of seven trillion. Right? It's in in 2010, the social security insurance was only 2.2, whereas the government fund revenue was 3.7. Now it's the other way around, and the the social security insurance is much higher than the, uh, the, the, the than the government fund re revenue. Um. So this means that as the local government started to lose revenue from land concessions, the taxes paid by people um, in the form of social security uh, have made up for the losses. Uh, the fourth category concerns the profits of state-owned enterprises or SOEs, and the Ministry of Finance releases data on SOE profits every month. and. Um, in 2010, the profits of, S of SOE was about one trillion, and it has just doubled in the 13 years, and it's now a little over two trillion, 2.3 trillion, so more than doubling. So what's what I want to show you? I, I just quickly tell told you the the categories. So here's the chart. Like I, um, it's a accumulated chart to show you the four categories like in relations with each other uh, the the dark blue the bulk of it is tax and non-tax um, although its weight in the mix is is reduced so what i want to show you now is the weight right is the weight of each category so tax and non-tax revenue um its weight has declined. In 2010, it was over 50%. For the for a few years, it was all over 50%. But it has decreased to below 50% in the past few years. Um, and government fund revenue, the, the, the real estate land concession, obviously has declined. It has declined um, dramatically from 23% in 2010 to 16%. Uh, last year. SOE profits, the last line, also dropped a bit. Um, so I highlighted the three lines, the three buckets or the three categories that have declined in green. The only category that experienced an uptick is this social security insurance. And it went from 14% to 26%. So that's people's retirement money. So it has been used to offset the decline in CCP's other major categories of tax revenue. And this is the secret the CCP has been 
uh, hiding. Um, so what, what this tells us is the Chinese government has increasingly relied on the money from Social Security to foot its bill in a situation where tax revenue growth is lost for the plundering of social security has become the only option for the regime. And that's the secret it's been hiding. As a result, Chinese retirees get very little from, from the government, particularly the ones in the rural area. So now let's, let me tell you the average monthly SS, uh, SSI payments. I shouldn't say SSI. <laughs> because uh, it, it has a certain meaning in the United States. I should say um, uh, it's, not, it's not the equivalent. Well, I should say the monthly social, social welfare or the retiree payment. So the Chinese government pays um, urban retirees on average 2,500 yuan a month, which is about $350. And you may say, well, that's not bad, given the fact that many Chinese can't even find a job, right? So if you have 2500 a month, that's not bad. And, you, and if there are two of you, you can make a, a you know, okay living. But don't forget, these people have been paying a mandatory 8% of their salaries. And their employer has been paying 20% of their, sa of their, uh, of their salary for years. And then this payment does not even include, I mean, they're not, I mean, they, they their health insurance is, is not covered. I mean, they just get very little um, for, for health insurance benefits. So they're not getting much at all. They're not getting their equitable share of the money that they, uh, that, that, that they put away. And now the government is trying to take the money from the individual account to the, to the, to the pooled account so it can spend, spend it on something else. Um, now, the monthly Social Security payment to retirees, or I shouldn't say retirees because the, the peasants never retire, I should say to rural elderly, it's only 200 yuan a month. That's $27 a month. Think about it. That's $27 a month. And China's population, you know, um, and this includes the migrant workers because the migrant workers are not considered uh, urban p uh, residents. So they, they don't get the 2,500 yuan a month. So they, they get the 27 um, dollars a month uh, because they're considered rural populations. So the majority of Chinese population is in rural China. So if you look at this, these people, the Chinese peasants are very, very poor because they're not able to, to, to support themselves. And so they are forced to work until their health um, fails them. Um, so uh, but but retired government officials get on average one thousand dollars or seven thousand yuan a month, and that's three times the average of urban retirees, and almost forty times the average of rural elderly people, and that just shows you how how much money the, the retired officials are getting. So now let me calculate China's tax burden ratio, right? Because now that I give you all the details, let's take a look at what, what China's tax burden ratio is and how does it compare to the 28% in the U.S. and the 40% in Europe. So I did my calculation. Uh, oh, here, here's the, uh, the percentage uh, breakdown. It's the same uh, same. I'm just trying to show you the, the weight of the four buckets um, visually. So you can see the, uh, the gray, the gray area is the, um, the retiree, the social security taxes. All right, now let's talk about China's tax burden ratio. Um, I did my calculation by using the official GDP and it doesn't look bad. It's about 40% across the year, almost the same as that of Europe. But we know this is not right because there's no way that um, the, I mean, I mean, Europe's, U Europeans have very good social 
um, welfare programs. I mean, they do get good benefits. Uh, there's no way that the Chinese are getting that kind of benefits. And so we know these numbers don't make sense. It doesn't work. So I know the problem is China's GDP is overstated. The denominator needs to be adjusted. So I normalized the GDP figure using the study by Professor Louis, uh, Louis Martinez from, from the University of Chicago. Um, and he had a study published in July 2021, uh, which states that authoritarian governments on average, overstate their GDP growth by 35%. So using his uh, analysis, I deflated China's GDP growth by 35% um, and came up with an adjusted GDP and recalculated the tax burden ratio. And I made another adjustment, which is that in the past three years, there's no way China's GDP experienced a growth. If anything, it had contracted given the extended severe lockdowns. Therefore, I made a second adjustment by wiping out any growth for, for the past three years GDP. So they remain flat um, from 2019 uh, or from 2020. And I came to the numbers in pink. So the, the, the blue section is using the official GDP. Uh, and then the pink section is uh, when I ad use, use adjusted GDP um, and, and come up with um, the, the tax burden ratio has been around 50% before the pandemic and is now over 60% in the past three years. This means that the Chinese government has collected the bulk of the wealth its people gen has generated. Uh, it has collected the bulk of the wealth through, through taxation. Right, has collected through taxation, various forms of taxation or land, land concession and social security uh, payment mandates and SOEs. Um, so, yeah, so the Chinese government has collected the bulk of the wealth it pe its people has generated through, through these categories uh, and also lotteries, right, through taxation, land concession, Lotteries, SOEs, SSI, uh, social security taxes. So in conclusion, the Chinese people bear the most severe tax burden um, among the major powers, right? Um, but do not enjoy much benefits at all. As the economy declines and tax revenue and SOE profit shrunk, the real estate land concession dwindled I mean, as the economy declines and tax revenue or SOE profit shrink and, and real estate land concession dwindle, the regime has, has to increase its effort to collect more money from its people through the social welfare benefits program as much as they can. Um, so for one, it has made some policy changes. So for example, the contribution to the Housing Provident Fund, which was a mandatory in the past, became mandatory in June last year. Um, so CCP is secretly forcing its people to pay more to foot its bill. Um, and and this, this certainly includes the skyrocketing expenses for retired government officials who enjoy three times more money than the average people. So as China age um, and more officials retire, this will create a serious social problem for the regime because the number of young people who pay social security taxes will become smaller and smaller. And you have more and more um, aging officials who demand so much money from, from society um uh, i think this this is going to be this this is going to be uh, you know not sustainable um a few years from now so with that said um i <laughs> i uh let me see 
I, I wrap up my uh, presentation. Let me see if people have comments and questions for me. Hold on. Let me go back to the very beginning. Uh, let's see. Let me go through the super chat questions first. Okay. Oh, here we go. One from Boy Kachina. Well, thank you. Love to lay. Well, thank you. Thank you for being there for me consistently. Thank you. Thank you, boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I think that's all. Okay. Um, six, someone says 60%. That's brutal. Yeah. I, I read that people say anything over 50% is not, is not sustainable. Um, although, you know, my, I mean, this is just a very rough es estimate, rough calculation because, um, I mean, the, the GDP has to be adjusted. And and I assume my adjustment, the adjustment I made to GDP is very, how to say, is very gentle because I assumed that the CCP did not massage its GDP data before 2010. So the number that I used only assumed that this data massage, the problem described by Professor Martinez um, only started after 2010. It did not exist before then, before that. And But then we know that's probably not true. CCP has been massaging its data for quite a while. So if, that, if that's true, then its GDP would be even lower because this, this, the base would be lower. Um, if that's the case, then the percentage, uh, the tax burden ratio will be even higher. So it's just, um, it's just a, a relative, uh, how to say, it's a rough exercise to give you an idea of um, the, 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 the tax burden on Chinese people in comparison to the United States and Europe. Um, yeah, that's just a rough, uh, a, a rough estimate. Okay. Let's see. Jeff Ramos, Sweden has 50% plus tax. Really? Wow. I didn't know that. Lei, somebody, Peekaboo, do you support boycott of Chinese products? Um, I, I think, how can you support? I mean, now in today's globalization, we have so many products, you know, that, that come in through Mexico that have components made in China. I mean, the Chinese manufacturers are shipping their components to Mexico or have it assembled there. And then, so then this will be imported to the U.S. under what, NAFTA, uh, as made in Mexico. But they are really, you know, probably 80% of the, of the product is made in China. So it's very hard to, to really boycott made in China products. But there are things that I think we should boycott, like, uh, like TikTok, right? And the, uh, WeChat. I think because these pose these pose a, uh, a great national security threat, um, but not just me. If you ask mainland Chinese, if you ask mainland Chinese, um, when they go do grocery shopping in the U.S. in Chinatown, ask them if they buy made in China products. They try to avoid them. At least people I know, they all, will all look at, we'll try to look at the labels, say, ah, made in China. No, if I could find something that's made in Taiwan or somewhere, or made in Korea or made, you know, somewhere else, we'll buy those products first. Uh, if we absolutely don't have a choice, then we buy it. So the Chinese are boycotting their own products. The Chinese don't, they're the people who don't believe in their products. So, you know, I think I'm much more reasonable than the Chinese. I mean, then I mean I'm Chinese, but you know, I'm saying some of the mainland Chinese who live here. All right. Um, oh, S I T H B K. Thank you. Will Tesla and Apple survive in China market? 
I was、uh, Apple is not doing very well. Tim Cook did not attend the the meeting with Xi Jinping. Remember those what two dozen CEOs, you know, had the honor of being received by by Xi Jinping,、um, and Tim Cook was not there. And some people say either he was not invited or <laughs> or he. Didn't bother to attend, you know. So, I think Apple. I think Tim Tim Cook went to China three times in the past twelve months. So he he went to China a lot more than Elon Musk. So I think he really made an effort trying to, you know, trying to make the Chinese government, you know, to open some green lights for him. But I don't think that's going to happen. So、uh, I don't. I don't think. I think Apple's prospect. Apple's prospect in China is worse than Tesla's prospect in China,、um, because the CCP still fears Elon Musk a little bit because of、um, Starlink and you know the other projects that he's involved in. I think they. they you know the more capable you are. You know, the more trump cards you hold in your hand, the more CCP will respect you or 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 or, or fear you. The more you try to cut out to them, the more agreeable you become. The less respect they have for you, the more difficult it is for you. So a lot of the Western CEOs, I think, missed that point. They tried to appear very agreeable in front of Xi Jinping, but that's really not the right thing to do. You know, actually, CCP respect those who those people who do the right thing for their company, for their people, for their country. Even though they don't say that out loud, but they're not. I mean, they're not dumb. They know that you're doing the right thing, and they know it's much more difficult to fight you.、Um, so, yeah. So,、um, so I think I think Apple has a has a. A more、uh, Apple's prospect in China is not as great as Tesla's, even though Tesla also has its challenges too.、Um, Tesla recently increases increased its price in China when all of its competitors are are, are reducing prices, but his competitors, like I said, re rely on government subsidies. Without the government subsidies, these his competitors.、Um, Uh, are losing money, losing a lot of money, so it's a, it's an unfair competition in the first place.、Uh, let's see. Nick Fury, China under Xi and CCP increasingly look like building the Great Wall of China under Emperor Qin Shi Huang. I think under Chi the China under Emperor Qin Shi Huang was still much better than. The China under Xi Jinping and CCP.、Um, I think I think there are a lot of misunderstanding about the first emperor of China or the first emperor who unified China. A, a lot had to do with CCP's alteration of Chinese history. You know, like CCP portrayed Qin Shi Huang as this, you know, brutal dictator,、um, but. That that may not be. That's not what history. That's not a、uh, a fair、uh, portrayal of of this emperor.、Um, it, it had to do with CCP's brainwashing. So I think two thousand years ago, under Qin Shi Huang, things、uh, life is was much better than today. All right. Let's see. Hiroshi Nagoya, I just would like to know how you can stay in contact with your friends from China without WeChat. I don't stay in contact with my friends in China. I don't. Yeah.、Um, why is Chinese so hard to learn? Good question. I find Chinese hard to learn too, particularly writing the characters.、Um, but that. You know, learning the character—that's like the core of Chinese culture. The characters has so much meaning in them. So,、um, 
I'm I feel very lucky that I'm born Chinese because if I'm not, I don't know if I'll ever be able to learn Chinese <laughs> as a foreign language. So I I know what you're saying. Um and then there's so many dialects that sound like a foreign language to me. Cantonese is a foreign language to me. Um, you know, nowadays in Chinatown, people speak, you know, Mandarin. But in in the old days, you know, there are people in Chinatown who don't speak English and don't speak Mandarin. The only language they speak uh, was Cantonese. So when I went there, I cannot communicate with them. We have we're both Chinese, but we cannot we cannot communicate because of the difference in in dialect. You know, yeah. Michael Harrington, like, do you think the Chinese government will be able to can subs subs sub subsidized their businesses according to the CCP's needs and still be sustainable, what they've done over the last decade. I think they've been cutting. Didn't they announce two years ago that they were going to cut uh, the EV manufacturers' subsidies and all of a sudden so many EV companies went bankrupt? You know, the ones that were created only to receive subsidies. There are a lot of fraud in the government subsidy business. There were companies created just to, you know, to milk uh, the subsidy business. So, so the government knows that its money is not is being wasted. You know, a, a significant portion of its money is being wasted. Um, but so it, yeah. So would it be able to subsidize? It tries to. I mean, it just shows you in in a highly centralized economy. You know, when a few people at the very top wants to control the direction or the economic life of this entire na nation, and this is not a small nation, it just creates all these inefficiency and and loopholes for for corruption. So the government subsidy program is is um, is very wasteful. Um, let's see. China is the last noble race and their lost generation. Made in China is very bad quality. Yes, not very good quality. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brian Cow. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian, for the star and then the, the support. Let me see. Is there a, another question? Uh, John S. Oh, here. Before that, Mitsu. Disney may be the hidden ace in the CCB in the CCB deck. I believe that the CCP was helping them cook the books. Can you look into this? The huge proxy fight now makes me think this. You mean the Disney may be the hidden ace in the CCB deck in where? Here or in China? Because there are Disneyland in China uh, that, that I don't think are doing very well. Um, yeah, because they're knockoff versions of Disney <laughs> in China that are more accessible to chi to Chinese in terms of culture. So, uh, so I'm not quite sure if you, you are you talking about here or in China. Um, um, and then John S. Chinese schools teach English. Why wouldn't they teach the different dialects? Is it intentional to keep divided populations? Um, well, the, the, the problem I described only existed in Chinatown uh, in the US, I think a while ago. It, uh, it no longer exists now because I think most people in Chinatown now are able, you know, I mean, either they speak English because they are the old, old Ch um, Chinese immigrants. Um, but now their second generation or third generation have or second generation are running the restaurants and they all speak English. Um, and in China, they teach Mandarin. So the dialect isn't a problem in China because everyone speaks Mandarin as at school. That's the official dialect. Uh, is it intentional? I don't think it's intentional, but I, China is a multi, 
uh, racial pop population. It's a multi ethnicity country. America has what two dozen ethnicities, so people are very different, and the, the subcultures are very different, and their dialects are very different. Um, yeah, so like the 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 Shanghainese, the Cantonese. And then, then if you go to Henan, you know, like Sichuan, I mean, I don't understand. I mean, th these dialects sound foreign to me. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it has to do with the, the, the vast land and then, you know, the different, the different origin. Yeah. Jeff Ramos, police and PLE soldiers are taxed too. How long they will stay loyal to CCP? Even now, it's mandatory to have at least three kids for soldiers. Police and PLE soldiers are taxed too. But I think they get ben better benefits. Um, yes, they are taxed too, but they get better benefits um, when they retire, uh, when they when they when they leave the military ordinary people's complaint is they pay so much and they're not getting anything after they retire they cannot make a living and that's why people are very resentful but for veterans um and for ccp retired officials that that doesn't seem to be a problem all right let's see Okay, I think I reached the bottom of all questions. Uh, okay, that's all. I thank you for joining me. I hope this is helpful, and I'll see you later this week. Oh, here I have a question from Herrick Lutz. Lei, do a show on Premier Li Qiang, his chosen successor. Yeah, I see these often, but it's it's not so much. I mean, the, there's so many topics that I can do shows on um, that, that people are talking about. You know, Li Qiang's successor, uh, who's what Ding Xuexiang, uh, who's the youngest Politburo Standing Committee member. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen because CCP politics changes quite dramatically. So who knows what will happen two years from now? Right, and the people are, are talking about Madame Xi seriously getting into politics. Um, like after the day, the day after I did my program on that subject, more media reports came out. She was featured in primetime news, um, and there were more talks about what position she will actually hold <laughs> when she um, step into when she steps into politics. So all of these things are, are uh, shaping up. And also, I wanted to talk to you about how the, the senior leadership within the PLA is fighting each other. Uh, the two vice chairmen are, don't see eye to eye. They're attacking each other publicly. So sometimes I don't even know like what topics I should choose. Um, but based on the survey I did, uh, it seems that people are not that interested in PLA. I thought people would be interested in the, in the PLA's development. Uh, but based on the survey, it got the least, it got the lowest rating. <laughs> so now I, I hesitate when I want to talk about the PLA. Uh, <laughs> All right. Somebody says CCP just needs to go. I I I agree. I couldn't agree more. All right. Thank you. Fighting generals. That sound interesting. I know. I mean, it's interesting to me. And also, there are um, somebody did a, 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 a somebody compiled a list of PLA publicity. You know how PLA has its own newspaper and media outlets and it sometimes you know does coverage on on the training and you know how these training uh these media reports on the training review so many inadvertently review so many weaknesses of the PLA and some of them are quite laughable 
So I, you know, I have read about those and I thought those are interesting because I don't think Westerners or, or Western audience are getting that or at least getting that fast enough. So, yeah, so maybe I will, fo- I will not follow the survey as much. Um, I'll see. You like the PLA. Okay, General Milley is a true American patriot. Lei, you can talk my ear off over any subject related to China. This is from, oh, Jake the Snake. All right. Um, I'm interested. Mark Hazinger. Hazinger, I'm interested in to learn about the PLA. Okay. All right. So off to the PLA we go next time. Okay. That's all for tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Um, Thomas Waldron, the missile that destroyed the building the other day did two things. Proved missile is not filled with water and denied soldiers hot pot <laughs> that night. I love your sense of humor, uh, Mr. Waldron. You're right. It's not filled with water. Um, and they didn't use the, the fuel to eat hot pot that night. But, um, but, but you're right. But do you guys, I have seen other leaked information from online Chinese sources saying that it is destroyed. The building, the, the building that were like wiped out that morning of March 13th was indeed wiped out by a missile, uh, a missile that failed its test. And, and they suspended the second testing of the same missile. Uh, I think good for them. Uh, so, yeah, so unless, I mean, I think the military experts should really look into that. I mean, they can tell if it's, if it's a missile or not. Uh, maybe they all know. They're just not saying anything. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.